So far, in Generation Rewear, we've met innovative designers, brands and companies, rethinking their approach to the design, manufacture and care of our clothes. Ultimately though, real sustainable change in the global fashion life cycle is down to us. More people need to know and realise, and also realise, you know, that they're not powerless, that they can do something about this. Globally, more than half of all fast fashion purchases are disposed of in less than a year. We need to take up the alternatives to fast fashion, and we need to rethink how we value and connect with our clothes. Otherwise, the planet will pay the price. In this episode, Vanish and the British Fashion Council talk to some of the people who are walking the path of slow fashion. Amanda Riley teaches the next generation sustainable skills from her home. Natty and Sara have turned vintage fashion into a lifestyle. <laughs> While Freya Bracchini shares the story of a well-worn denim jacket. This is a RAF flight suit, which I put customised by putting one of my embroideries on the back and uh, Sancho a little matching bandana and a bit of um, camo as well. <laughs> when I made my first dress, I was only eight years old, so it was just part of me, really, from then on. I decided to start a little fashion school in my house and that's where Fashion Factory classes started. It's just so nice to be surrounded by children and passing on such an amazing life skill, actually, and something that they get so much joy from. This was um, a jacket that my dad got for my mum when she was pregnant with me. He's from the States, so I think it was like a classic American <laughs> thing. It's like a men's jacket. It's very like big and oversized. It's still got like the stones in here. And I remember when I first my mum first gave it me, she was like, like, don't lose these stones. And I got rid of one. <laughs> it's like starting to fray a little, but it's been on nights out, it's been to Birmingham for uni, it came with me to London, and I yeah, I love it to pieces. There's like pictures of her kind of pregnant. That one, yeah, that picture. So I assume she must be pregnant with me there, um, which is quite special. It's great having like something where you buy it and it's like, cool. You have that like instant satisfaction. Whereas I think with like an item of clothing that's passed down, it's kind of like that idea of like, if these walls could speak, like, you know, if this clothing could speak, like what's it seen, what's it done, where has it been? And I think, it kind of feels like, I don't know, that person's with you, I guess. I'm inspired by 1930s, 40s, mostly. I went through a lot of different styles from pre-punk, kind of do-it-yourself, finding clothes and altering them, maybe finding a coat and cutting the back of the coat and going around the zip and creating this mad short coat. I started off from an artistic point of view and putting attachments like clocks and dials. But then I, I've got more interested in fabrics and, and, uh, and that led me to the style that I like now. One day I was in my kitchen and I was listening to an environmental scientist talk on the radio and what he said was actually quite... It was, frightening, it was quite disturbing. And then it, I, everything really became a reality from that moment and I just thought I have to act. What can I do to help, you know, prepare future generations for the challenges that are probably going to lie ahead as well? I always had hand-me-downs, always had clothes from family and friends. And so when we were in the States, I was wearing like boys' clothing because <laughs> we had friends who were boys and they were bigger than me, so I just wore their clothing. And so I think it's been normalised to wear clothes that were other people's. I remember as a child and teenager being very interested in my grandmother's clothes and just enjoy go to her room and open the dresser and try the gloves and try the hat. Fashion is always cyclic, isn't it? So in the 60s, there was a big revival of the 20s. 
So I guess that there was always people interested in vintage. I think it's really important to, to sort of tune into, you know, how much effort goes into making something. And creating something, there's nothing better than really creating it yourself. There are dresses which have been made out of jeans and then we've patched work the legs together to make the sort of full skirts on them. We've used bed sheets which we've tie-dyed to make little jumpsuits. Pretty much everything that you see there has been upcycled by them. I think for me, yeah, sustainability, yeah, is about kind of not leaving too much rubbish and being more circular, I guess, in how you live and how you, and how you exist. It's up to the consumer, I think, to think about what, they, what their responsibility is. If I spend money on things, not that I've got any money at the moment, but if I uh, spend money on things, I, um, is that I don't feel as um, fulfilled as when I actually make something with my hands or, or use my, my mind to reinvent something that I've already got. Sustainable is something that is going to morph into something else. It's not going away. It's not going to end up in landfill or in the sea or cluttering up somebody else's country. It's going to go on <laughs> as long as it gets until it completely falls apart. <laughs> and then, no, even when it falls apart, it's still going to continue. Yeah, it's just going to be used and used and used. I like to think myself as the present owner of this garment or this object, but I want to think that uh, after me will pass to other person yeah, and will just carry on the history of it. I think people must be getting to the point where they realise they've got loads of clothes in their wardrobe and most of them they're not wearing and that maybe we should start doing something about this. I guess for me it's a lot about not washing them too much. I often wash on like 30 or like a quicker setting just to use less water. You can use special like, uh, I think they're called guppy bags inside the machine. You can even get special filters now so that the microfibers don't go into waterways. If you own less stuff that is vintage but you really appreciate your things, you want to keep them going. So not only you will learn yourself to make the things last, but also you are contributing for little businesses and uh, things that should carry on existing. There is a thing about, I think, older clothes are just better made. But I think back then they were made less, you know? Like you bought less stuff. Only buy it if you really need it and if you think you're going to wear it a lot. And that's, that's kind of like the, the simplest way to be more sustainable, I guess. You can get a really good basic thing that you'll wear forever and form like a, a key part of like every outfit you wear. You can upcycle anything, you know. If you've grown out of something, I've made plenty of my dresses or skirts bigger. It's not that hard to do. It's just about showing different ways and, and showing that there's alternatives and interesting stuff to look in the past. And uh, yeah, and just enjoy it. <laughs> if everyone starts upcycling like we're doing, then all of these fashion companies, they might try and upcycle the things that they've done. Creating these habits younger is so important. I think the next generation are pretty scared and like our generation are pretty scared. So are all trying to take baby steps, but it relies on everyone taking those baby steps, I guess. Brilliant, great. Okay. Mm.